Hello everybody, welcome to week six of AeroBB. Now we've got Drac Blackclaw with his uh, Lizardman team. He's got a wizard and a babe. Up against Jedi Bear with his Chaos Dwarf team. Uh, it's not actually the best Chaos Dwarf team ever, is it? You know, he's, he's got one Claw Mighty with horns and some a smattering of guard. He's got pretty nice bulls. I like his bulls. <laughs> And uh, he's got, you know, both with tackle, which obviously sucks for us elves. He's really built his team to beat elves. You know, like, built them more to beat elves, right, with his extra tackle, which really... He, he, skipped a, he skipped a double on the guard one, I believe, and then obviously took tackle on this one, whereas for most of his games, you know, like, he's going to struggle more. There's a, there's a lot more bash teams, right? And Chuff struggle more against the bash teams. And beat the L's more. And I'm not just saying that because I'm bitter and twisted, but um, <laughs> I think. It, but then, at the other hand, you know, on the other hand, I'm the Dark Elves and Eliod's the Wood Elves. So there is a certain argument for building more towards Elves than Bash. But still, when there's so much Bash, and you know, the Bash are pretty bashy, I think building more to face Bash is certainly sensible. But yeah, it's only Claw Mighty, so no, no Claw Pom. He, uh, he decided against it, which, you know, who can say if it's good or bad, but I will tell you, it's terrible. <laughs> I think you need piling on. It's, it's too powerful, right? It's just, it's insanely powerful. I think it's objectively wrong to not take piling on <laughs> after Claw Mighty. Now, obviously, getting the double and taking horns is fair enough, right? Get the, the horns is fair enough, but the guard, I think, should have been piling on. Like, uh, to me, there's no doubt. To me, there's absolutely no doubt. And I know he's a bit light on guard everywhere else, but again, he could have taken guard on the uh, on the bull here. I just think you have to have. And this is the guy who wants to blitz anyway, and he's got horns. I just think you have to give him piling on. I think you have to. But obviously, some people don't like it, right? PC doesn't like it. And again, I just think if you don't like it, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> just think you're wrong. I think that's it. I think it's okay. I think some things are right and wrong, right? I think liking block guard more than uh, you know kick hail mary pass is that's one of those is right and one of those is wrong. And uh, piling on the with particularly with claw, the odds are just so much in the favour of it. It's ridiculous. Well, you know, you know, Chofs are kind of, you know, a little bit more unlikely to get. They do need a double for the claw pom, but yeah, I think it's, you know, the 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 bad thing about Chofs is the claw pom is their only movement four, you know, so um, so like I wouldn't have minded taking uh, jump up on the double, even before he got piling on, just because like that that's basically their big weakness is the claw pom is being moved. Four. And strength, but then you know, strength three is the other one, so getting horns to remedy that is, is totally legitimate. But yeah, I just think it's so powerful. It's just literally so powerful in this format. You know, it's like it's like per, it's like not liking sneaky git in a in um, Blood Bowl three, and you may not like it, but I think you've got to. If you're not using it, I just think you, you're wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I think there's a right and a wrong sometimes. Very rarely in Blood Bowl. Thick skull and an elf throw. Hello, fat in. Yeah, that's, that was one of Rick's. It's terrible. It's definitely wrong. And yeah, Team Antilla. Yeah, like that's the other thing, right? Like, what's he called? Uh, PC doesn't like piling on, right? So he, so he plays dwarves where their movement for they can all get guard, stand firm. You know, their strength three, so they need as much standing as possible. So he basically is chosen to play the team that needs piling on the least. <laughs> so it's easier for PC to dislike piling on anyway, right? He also piling on, particularly with Claw, is the is the thing that wrecks dwarves. So he's managed to get the perfect storm of uh, using the race that wants piling on the least and gets screwed by piling on the most. So yeah, it's not surprising he, he doesn't like it. <laughs> Nice little surf there. At first I was bamboozled as to why he wasn't blitzing with Claw, but then uh, it all it all became clear. Dr 
Drac is pretty much the punching bag of Division 1, yep, unfortunately, as you can tell by his team. He has uh, some skills on Skinks. He hasn't got many skills on his Saurus. Um, for this game, he's got a Wizard and a and a Babe, and he's been, you know, he's been getting, he's been getting, uh, what's he called, Silly Billy, a fair amount as well. His team just hasn't got the development of the uh, of the other teams. <laughs> And I, yeah, I think maybe he got like maybe I don't know if he entered late or got promoted from, you know, one like maybe he got promoted from one of the lower divisions up to Division One. I don't know, or maybe like he was already in Division One but like had a hard season. I don't know why he's he's so underdeveloped compared to everyone else. I mean, I know he's Lizardman, right? So I guess it, it maybe he was in the top division, so he was trying to win his games rather than to skill his Saurus. And then obviously, as time goes by, Saurus get removed. Like, you know, these two are probably new Saurus, right? Rookie Saurus. The rookies are probably new players that he's had to replace Kaz. Because he's up against Claw Mighties and stuff. So he takes Kaz, and then uh, they just they just fall apart a little bit, don't they, Lizard Men in Leagues? All the tackle, all the tackle does its job. This guy might get fouled now. The dirty player's stunned, but still. Easy to blitz this guy, get the ball back. But that's it, isn't it? That's the, um... That is the, uh... That is the thing. I mean, that's the price you play for being Lizardman and being dominant at low TV, isn't it? So, you know, maybe, maybe he had great success in Season 1 and 2. And had his fun then, and then is is having a little less fun in in the third season. And uh, Squiggy was undefeated, I believe, in the second season, winning the winning Division Two in the second season. But then, um, you know, as TV goes up, Undead fall off. They would have fallen off anyway. He did get his entire team killed by Jedi Bear in game one of the season. But even if that hadn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> he would have already started to fall off. Like this is uh, under would have already started to fall off. Um, so there you go. When are you meant to have fun? Uh, high elves should have fun. Season two and three. Yep. And it's it's so annoying, isn't it? All the tackle. It's gonna uphill him. Not what I would have done. And you can say if it's good or bad. I think you've got to put in. You've got to make it a one, right? I think you've got to make it a one. And the key could have come in to make it a one. Oh no, he can't because he's got guard on both sides. He's got a guard on both sides, so you can't make it a one. So you probably just don't hit him. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's strength four and he's got a guard on both sides. So yeah, you probably just uh blitz the claw mighty <laughs> and hope for the best. The claw mighty is movement three! Oh my god, I didn't even I well, do you know what I did know it? And then forgot. So actually, movement three, taking <laughs> taking guard, makes a bit more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> so yeah, maybe he already had movement three when he took guard on him. Oh wow, I didn't even notice that. Flip me. My bad. Well, there you go. Don't watch the VOD. I knew all along. Oh dear. Yeah, thanks for that team on Taylor. Flip me. And that's all of the lizards down, pretty much. Can now just run away and try to get a one turn. I'd have, I'd have blitzed there and ran. <laughs> blitzed and ran. <laughs> this guy runs away. Yep, thanks.
And they're taking the claw mighty hit, aren't you, for no reason, basically. And beam movement. Oh, that's really good. That's really good to know for when I play that this guy's movement three, so I can hopefully almost certainly avoid him. He's just a bit like a tree man, isn't he? I can just, uh, I can just run away from him all the time. And if he piles on, really run away from him. Oh, he can't. He hasn't got pile on. <laughs> but he's like the only mighty blow blocker, isn't he? Yeah, he's claw. He's, he has got claw, but. You've got to hit this skink, right? Seeing as you can, I think you have to. Sure, looks at he's moved the claw. What? Well, I would have only stunned the skink anyway. I really like blitzing the skink. Like, this guy is really good, isn't he? Can score a one turn as well. Oh, I guess this gets the foul off with a bunch of GMs. And it does make, obviously, this stronger. Like, oh, wow. Um, Gouge like apples. it going for the win? A bit of a power apple there. Or going for the draw. I don't know why I said win. Going for the draw. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you can get a good run and, and get in the playoffs. It's just so tough, though. Like, his team is is just not up to the not up to the task. I don't think. <laughs> can claw mighty the crocs or surface skink? I don't like that. This guy could have reached here, couldn't he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. He's gone straight for the blitz on him. 3D, because of the horns. I guess this guy can just make another GFI and get in there. But him, him just standing there would have been nice, wouldn't it? Hunt down the skinks. Foul this one, yeah. Just numbers game now. Apple's gone, isn't it? Well, that's how you win the numbers game. <laughs> Still fighting a little bit. Mm. Really don't like giving up this hit. 3D on this guy is uh, not what you want to do. That's what you want to do, not what you, not what you want to receive. <laughs> We're getting a 3D here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, no. He did the patented gym technique of moving all your guards, then realised you can't get 3D anyway. <laughs> Look, the super hobo gets another tutty. Ooh. All fail. But you know he's got he's got the ultimate the ultimate one turner. It's not ultimate obviously he doesn't have sprint show feet. Doesn't have sidestep, but uh it's still very good. Pal him, blitz this one. Push one to there. You probably do it. You can should probably do this even with as few places he's got, I imagine. 
I imagine you can do it, as long as you get to power on the first hit. I imagine it's doable. I mean, there was an argument for not going it purely on, you know, your Apple's gone, you've got no rerolls. <laughs> Don't have your Super Skink die. Is uh, very valid. So the thing, isn't it, with commentating on the um, on the playoffs is a bit different, like the CCL playoffs, because in the Chalice, you're just trying to win the game, basically. There is a tiny amount of tournament equity. But it's 99% of the time you just got to win the match in front of you. Whereas with this, there's a, there is a, a certain element of skilling up your team and protecting them, etc. And just losing interest because the games don't matter that much. <laughs> you know, like if you've got 11 games in a season, you're more likely to settle for a draw or whatever, right? Or accept a loss or anything like that in an 11 game season. It's just not the same intensity as... Uh, as one game chaos. So, you know, you're much less likely to put your best player on the line to win a game, even to stop a one turn, right? Even putting three sidesteppers to stop a one turn. You might think, nah, I don't care that much, <laughs> which is what I've generally done. But, you know, it depends. Some of the matches are like six pointers, aren't they? Like, say, uh, say the top, top end of the table. If you lose and it means your rival wins, it's really really bad isn't it so in those games you've kind of got to put your side steps on the LOS and stuff but um, for here I would be fine putting I think I don't I hate this putting this guy on I think you, know, you put the rookie on there I know they've got stand firm and stuff but nah I'm, I'm using them here also this guy is exposed isn't he one, two, three, four, five, six. He could double GFI to hit the uh, to hit the hobgoblin on two dice. I would do. I think I would do that. Honestly, I think I would do that. I'll show you why. Because he's still got eleven players, and uh, he's got a chance of a draw, hasn't he? And this player's really good, and you can just nail him on turn one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Double GFI. Get guard in. And then cancel this assist and then 2D him. And if you remove this guy, like it's a huge removal. Also psychologically, he should have he should have had the guard the guard bull over here as well to cover him. Or the guard or the guard uh, chaff there to cover him because you'd really don't lose this guy instantly. Um, I think. Glorious. Oh, there you go. No, I Glorious. Won't Nearly Until four I'm years. Victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. Oh baby lads, boys, lads. Lads, boys, lads, boys, lads, 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 boys, lads. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ooh, didn't make this 3D. You gotta make that 3D. Even with you know, he's up he's up against Stan Firm, even with block. Um I wanna make that 3D please. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Frosty. Staying fantastic for four whole years. Unbelievable. Cheers. So yeah, while that looks like a shit play to blitz this guy, I would think I would have tried it. Because you've got to get lucky. Like, your team's worse. You've got 11 players, you've used your wizard. Um, you've got to get lucky to win. I guess there's the argument with a bribe that if you do that, your guard gets isolated and fouled. So yeah, actually, yeah. and then it's where you get a foul. So maybe the bribe, maybe they get the ref. I think I would have set up to do that, and then maybe they get the ref right to change my mind, honestly. Because then this guard guy gets hit by the bull and he gets a big gang foul on your guard, which really sucks, doesn't it? So actually, the 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 uh, get the ref might have changed my mind on going for that blitz. But going for that blitz, I think, is a bad play ordinarily. But I think in this case, it would have been justified. I think a lot of the time, desperation stakes, bad players become good players. And I think that... Uh, I would have tried to exploit that hobble being exposed. Well, I like to think I would. 
course, if it was a real game, I probably just wouldn't. I would probably just put my players in the wrong squares completely. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Tapioca King. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. They've got they've got fumble as well, haven't they? Branching out. Another foul? I mean, surely. And then there's the bribe gun. So bribe gun for two completely ineffective fouls. Is a bit sad, isn't it, for the uh, lizards? I wonder what Jeddy Bear's plan is here because you know if he just holds off, who's to say the skink won't just two plus through? So like, you know, he doesn't have to get far into the into the opposing half, does he? Like two squares into the opposing half. So playing passively like this could lead to a draw. So maybe he has to get one ball forward. He's tied up the Saurus, hasn't he? So now with the Taurus, the Taurus, the Taurus sided up, with the, with the Saurus tied up, maybe this bull comes forward to put a bit of pressure on. I don't know if he's fouled the, the break tackle one, right? Because the break tackle one is the only one that can come after this bull. So the dirty player could have come here to foul. And then you've got a bit more behind, and now it's really hard to deal with this ball. Well, he's not trying to deal with a ball. Which means he's going for a handoff, but he's not in scoring. Oh, he is in scoring range, he's got sprint. He's got sprint. Yeah, no, he's got sprint. He's got sprint. He was in range. I wrote it off because he wasn't in range, but of course he's got sprint. This is one of those things where it happens. I I think I like I like making excuses myself, but I think if you're commentating a game, it's a lot easier to not notice that the guy's got sprint, right? Whereas if you're playing the game, you know you've given that guy sprint. You know that guy's got sprint. And if you're playing against somebody, well, it's it's up to you. To know that that guy's got sprint, isn't it? Like, obviously, much more. I've lost games before where I like. I, I tend to not count squares, and like, I'll think oh, I'm safe from that guy, and then you know that guy to move up, and uh, it's got me in trouble. That happened most, most famously for me. I say famously, you know what I mean? Uh, in in Rebel, where uh, it was a random boy had vampires, and he, he had a guy with plus move, and I just looked, you know, I looked at a vampire, thought standing here is safe. And he was a move seven vampire, so he sucked my ball. Um, what I did against Elliot is I, I looked at his team and, and stood here and thought this is good, and then counted and moved it forward, and then that, that you know cost me the game. So you shouldn't, you know, there's, I'm probably better off not counting anything. <laughs> I'm probably better off not counting anything ever. But, um, you know, it can catch out, but it's up to you. It's up to you to know. But plus, if somebody has plus movement or minus movement, right? Like, obviously, Jeddy Bear is acutely aware that this guy has got minus movement. Um, what I can't do for these games is look at the teams before the match starts, right? Because in client, it's a replay, so they've already had the game, so I can't even look to see what the players are because some of them could have died or whatever. Um, and even if I could, I probably wouldn't just leave it like this. But yeah, if you're playing somebody, if you're playing against this Chorf team, then you look at the team before you play and you see that is that is uh, Claw Guy is movement three. So like, you know, I think the players should be more aware of things like that. But then also I think what happens is during the game, you do get tunnel vision a bit, you see a plan and then, you know, you 
I think watching a game it's much easier to take yourself out of the game and see different ways of doing things whereas once you're in the game you kind of get that bit of tunnel vision so there you go there you go yeah vamps are interesting aren't they uh, they're so interesting that I'm never going to play them but <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what Elliot thought of them. That's uh, that's all I can say about vampires. <laughs> I'm interested to see what Elliot thinks about them. <laughs> He's going all in here. Which seems all right, isn't it? At the end of the day, like you're not going to win a protracted combat versus this claw guy, <laughs> and the bulls can do things, and you've got the strength advantage, even though you've got very little guard. So I think I think going all out like this, even though it's a pretty easy, you know, getaway up the field. I think it's. Uh... Ooh. Brilliant happy old thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I'd do well with the new vamps. It's still Blood Bowl, isn't it? <laughs> like, it's still Blood Bowl at the end of the day. They're, they they may be different to other teams. Like, I did all right with uh, with old vamps. Like, it's still Blood Bowl. But um, it's just a bit... Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a vampire guide having not played them. Whew. Big, big 4 plus dodge there. If that fails, the the, the Saurus just break tackles off and hits him. Like even even Underworld, I wouldn't make an Underworld guy because I just haven't played them enough, right? Like, and it's still Blood Bowl. Like, Underworld are way more like a normal team than uh, vampires are. I'm sure it'd still do well. You can be my wingman but, um, you know, it wouldn't do as well as Elliot because he's played more than and it does matter, the uh, experience. Thank you very much, Ben Burns, for the big raid, glorious. Welcome to the stream. Insane raid, yep. I'll tell you after the match, Brown Bucky, because, you know, kind of in the middle of this, right? <laughs> It's impossible to pause replays, unfortunately, so... <laughs> no, no, I, I am, I am the, like, uh, I am very much in the Elp. I'm nearer Elp meme numbers than I am Jimmy Fantastic numbers these days. <laughs> That's for damn sure. <laughs> Definitely near out, maybe than Jimmy Fantastic, yep. Yep. Man, here we go, a million, a million dice to try and knock down this, uh, this Crocs gets him. And then, oh baby, we get to hit this guy with claw. Wait, oh no, oh. I guess this is the sensible play. Killed him. Not bad. I'd really want to blitz, blitz him and dodge off though. Eight times out of nine is the right play, isn't it? Eight times out of nine blitzing this guy is the right play. But I can understand him not wanting to uh, <laughs> take the chance. And that's the thing, it's interesting, isn't it? Because obviously nine times out of nine the, the Blitzing the Saurus, every time Blitzing the Saurus is good. And then eight times out of nine Blitzing the Skink is, is you know, well, no, two times out of three Blitzing the Skink is better. And eight times out of nine is almost certainly better. Yeah, this this guy looking dead sure makes the thing, but you know, maybe he would have had more guys die if he hadn't power up or right? He'd have been men down from the start. And, uh... Oof, gets the pow! 
I, I don't like approing a miss next. Like, I think you are... Uh, Wow, you you power up or badly hurt, so it definitely works, right? I don't I don't think appowing the miss next is in a league is probably ever good unless it's a really crucial game. I didn't like six apple of his killer. I think you just accept miss nexts and accept that you know you're downgrading your expectations from a win to a draw or a draw to a loss <laughs> is the way I tend to uh, play it in leagues. If it was uh, if it was Chalice, then it would be a you know a much tougher decision to like maybe just accept the uh, maybe accept the miss next. Depends how much it harms your chances in the next round. Things like that. Probably should have moved these first, right? Should have moved this bull first. Moved this guy to here first because they, that's all they're going to do. So just move them there first so they're protecting the ball. Yeah. And I know this, this bull could have got an extra hit if it was just a push, but I still think you just move the meat on the squares first. Which again, not everyone do, you know, even the best players don't do not do that all the time, do they? But I think if you were playing for, you know, a five grand game, you probably would remember to do it every time. <laughs> if you were getting paid a million and a half pound a week by Saudis to play a blood ball. <laughs> you probably would remember to move those guys first. <laughs> yeah. I sure feet skink. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what thing he's on, isn't it? That's what Ronaldo's on. A million and a half a week, imagine that. It's alright, isn't it? It's alright, Perry. Not no money, no. <laughs> no, not no money. Just not Saudi money, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, could have put in two players to chain the ball in. No, it wouldn't work. Sorry. Disregard. For some reason, I'm thinking that was coming from the other side. But it could have come from the other side, right? Could have hit from the other side. The, the Crocs could have hit, hit the... Could have, these two players could have come in here, then the cross could have hit, and then could have chained the skink in for an extra hit. That's a definite exaggeration, I mean. You've obviously been reading The Guardian or something, <laughs> rather, than <laughs> rather than actual... <laughs> Rather than actually looking at the games themselves. But there you go. Right. Um, <laughs> so there you go, 2 1 win. Uh, again, good effort by Drac. He's just, he's up against it. He is really up against it. His team is, is just below below par. Um, you know, it's it's just a battle. A battle to maybe get eighth, right? Like, there's a, there's a few teams down the bottom there where they just not a mark against the coaches they're, they're just teams haven't got the development it's going to be tough for them um it's going to be a struggle for him and jedi bear gets right up there with this win um he is in the chasing pack for the for the buy spots so it's gonna be super interesting congrats to him thanks for watching everyone don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic <laughs>